So one of the key questions that we get is, what's your story? When you're not doing the things the right way, what's your story? Your name, what's in a name? According to a um, poet, he states that knowing a name gives you power. Knowing the meaning of your name gives you power. My name is Wangoi, but my friends say in Kikuyu accent, Wangoi. And Angoi is actually a Kikuyu name. Kikuyu is one of the ethnic tribes in Kenya. Now, the first man and the first woman of the Kikuyu tribe in Kenya was Gekoyo and Mumbi. Angoi means a song leader. Now, Yekoyo and Mombi were blessed with nine daughters and they actually didn't have a son. But the interesting thing is, as we keep on saying that the boy child has been forgotten, it seems that also in this Kenyan legend that the boy child was also forgotten. So what, is, what have I just done? I've used a story to tell you the meaning of my name. Why do we tell stories? Why are stories important? Stories are important because they get you into the mind of the storyteller. They get the attention of the storyteller. And once that happens, then out of stories, we can be able to get information. You can be able to get the mindset or the point of view of the storyteller. And you can easily even buy into an idea. According to John Newbern, who is also a renowned prosecutor and author, he says that people are divided into three groups. The first group is the one that people who know what is happening, people who make things happen, and people who have no idea what is happening. Now, one day I sat with my father and I asked him why he loved planting trees. It was almost like an, it's almost like an obsession because he would plant trees to a point that if we go and visit someone, normally in the African culture, when you go and visit someone, there's a saying that says, don't go empty handed. My father will always carry a pot with a small tree. It was such an obsession to a point that I never understood why. So once I asked him and he said that he loved planting trees since he was young. And the very interesting thing was the end product of every tree that he planted is beauty. Now, like every other child you'd imagine, you'd want a tree full of sweets. So he once planted a sweet, intending to get a tree full of sweets. But 60 years down the line, I'm sure that has not yet happened. So as we look at stories, why is it important to tell a story? Why should you tell a story? Should, should stories be intentional? So I'm going to tell you about four ways that you can be deliberate when it comes to actually you telling your stories. So the first thing is storytelling brings people together. Story, it's all about bringing people together and also inspiring them. Every time a story is told, whether it is by a renowned person for example, Dr. Martin Luther King, the whole idea is they want you to buy into their idea. But the listeners will always listen to your story if there is a common value. I'm sure you've heard of Dr. Martin Luther King and I'm sure you've heard of his speech, I Have a Dream. You may not have maybe read it, but I'm sure you've heard of it. Now in his speech, he states that he intends that he has a dream the one day his four little children will be looked at peop by people, but they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Now, as you're looking at right now in our case scenario in our, in globally and also in our country, racism, for example, has been one of the key issues. But this was a dream by Dr. Martin Luther King. And it, Dr. Martin Luther King was a known orator, an inspiring leader who inspired people and also changed the minds and hearts of the American people. His whole idea was trying to say that when he mentioned in his speech that he has a dream also that in Alabama,
Little black boys and girls will hold hands with little white boys and girls as brothers and sisters. He was just trying to say simply this. It's not about the color of your skin, but it is about the content of your character. He used stories to inspire people. He used stories to get people to support the idea of unity. What about Kenya? Kenya, we have tribalism. We have issues about social class. What would be the speech? I have a dream that one day we as Kenyans will be able to hold each other's hands as people from one motherland and will not judge each other based on social class or tribalism, but we will look at each other and judge, it, judge it, each other by the content of our hearts. So does it mean just because you have a dream it will not come to pass the whole idea is this once you start getting your listeners to listen be it through a story it will reach a point that they will be heard it may not have been then that the voice of dr martin luther king was heard but maybe years later his voice would have been heard the second reason for telling stories is to get people to behave in a certain way. It's very interesting because with children, if you want to get them to behave in a certain way or streamline their character, at times you get to tell them a story. Now, the stories at times are revolving around either encouraging them or even creating a sense of fear just to make them behave in a certain way. So it's not just about you as a storyteller having to tell a story for the entertainment purposes, but in order to get people to behave in a certain way, it is important to use stories. But most feats that has worked is when people use their own personal stories. As a storyteller, if you get to tell your story and your listeners listen to you, they are more likely to relate to you as opposed to you talking about someone else or giving a story of someone else in second person. So, the third reason as to why we tell stories is to inspire people and also to inform them. When we, when we think about the late Professor Wangari Mathai, what comes to mind? Trees or the hummingbird story? Now, the very interesting thing about the hummingbird story, when I first heard of it, I asked myself, why would Professor Wangari Mathai use a hummingbird story? Why not other birds? I will first tell you, I will first narrate to you the story of the hummingbird, and then I will explain to you why the hummingbird. So, according to the story, a forest was burning. And, once, and while it was burning, the other animals actually looked while the forest and their home was being destroyed. The hummingbird was the only, an, was the only bird that actually went to the river, took water with its small beak to try and put down the fire. Now, the reality about the hummingbird is this. According to the Guinness World Record, the hummingbird is the smallest bird in the world. And it's actually the bee hummingbird and it's found in Cuba. It only weighs 1.6 grams. Now the other animals wondered and asked, why would you do that? I mean, you have such a small beak to go and, you know, fetch water and try and put down the fire. You have tiny wings. So in short, the speed, you're going to be slow. And these questions were being asked by able animals such as the elephant. There's one key thing that the Hummingbird said, because I am doing the best that I can. Now, Professor Wangari, the late Professor Wangari Madai was basically saying this. You may feel like a hummingbird. You may feel insignificant. But as long as you do the best that you can, then you can be able to make a difference within your space. So according to Professor Wangari Madai, he saw planting of trees 
was the best way she could take care of the environment. And up to now, we have the Green Belt Movement and we have also other supporters and other people who actually find passion in her story and get to plant trees. Profe the late Professor Agari Madhai was a renowned environmentalist activist and also secondly, she won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. Have you felt like a hummingbird? Have you felt so tiny, so insignificant to a point that you decide to be a person who just watches as things go wrong, as you watch the, you know, the planet going down the drain? As tiny as you are, you can actually make a difference. The final reason why we can use storytelling is basically for entertainment purposes. Storytelling works right now because of technology. We have storytelling out of a song that you hear, there's always a story. Out of a beautiful poem, spoken word, there's a story. Out of film, there's a story. Out of a song, there's a story. There's always a story behind every form of creation. And that is the interesting thing. And, that, and you as a storyteller, you need to be active in actually telling your story. Then you get your listeners' attention. So in whatever space you may be in, whatever community that you may be in, what are you doing? What are you doing to make that difference? What are you doing to make that change? Remember there are three kinds of people. People are divided into three. The ones who make things happen, the ones who watch things happen, and those who don't know what is happening. So you have a choice to decide the kind of person that you want to be, despite at times you may feel like a hummingbird. I volunteer at Yanibis prog mentorship program. And one of the key things that is done and I've noticed is they use storytelling. That is the mentor actually tells the mentee their story and they expect the mentee to pick up points from the stories that they are told. Hence, storytelling is a very important key and not only that, should be a deliberate tool that can be used not only to make a difference but also to change the mindset of young people to have leaders such as the late Dr. Martin Luther King and the late Professor Wangari Mathai. Thank you very much.